Welcome back to Every Third House by Marjorie Frisby. Chapter 10 Tracy expected to cry. She was bursting like a gorged balloon, straining for release. Her eyes burned. Her arms and legs twitched restlessly, like they were trying to pull her somewhere, somewhere away. But no tears came. Slowly Tracy became aware of the low monotones droning on in the kitchen. She could imagine Grandma telling Grandpa what a jerk she was. She felt the indentations in her face from lying on the ridged bread's bedspread. Her room had a sour popcorn smell after the fresh spring air. She rolled over and knelt on the radiator cover to open the window. Her eyes lighted on the book about Tad Lincoln she'd left there this afternoon before she'd gone to see her mother. Tracy stared at the picture of President Lincoln bending over a book with his young son. When she'd finished the book a couple of hours before, she'd sat a while thinking what a nice man Abraham Lincoln was, how carefully he listened to people, how willing he was to give any help he could. And all the while he was having troubles of his own. Troubles of the President in wartime, troubles with his own wife's unpredictable temper. How could you be so nice, she asked the figure of the President, as she examined the gentle set of his head his intent gaze, the paternal inclination of his body towards his attentive son. Why didn't you flare up when you had so much reason to be so angry? Tracy thought about the time the famous lawyer Edwin Stanton cut Lincoln when they were introduced in court, saying he could not associate with such a gawky, long-armed ape as that. Even though Lincoln was hurt at being cruelly snubbed, he made Stanton his Secretary of War later on because he was convinced he was the best qualified choice. Secretary Stanton was as fierce with people who came to him for special favours as he had been with Lincoln. If you have raised up sons to rebel against the best government under the sun, you and they must take the consequences, he told the mother of a wounded prisoner of war. When the same woman went to President Lincoln, he promised to parole her son if she believed he would honour that parole. I am ready, Mr President, to peril my personal liberty upon it. Tracy thought about the, that weeping woman, only a ripple on the stream of people who waited outside Lincoln's office every day. What did they want? A job? Release of a prisoner? Pardon of a deserter? No wonder Lincoln was exhausted. No wonder Tad said, Ain't you tired of folks, Pa? Tracy looked up from the Lincoln story, Tad's words running through her mind. Day after day, year after year, no matter how many irritating people claimed his attention, President Lincoln never did seem to tire of them. He's different from me, Tracy realised. I get tired of folks fast. I couldn't wait to get away from my mother, from grandma, from grandpa. I couldn't wait to get in my bedroom, close my door, hide behind Mary Lincoln. Mary Lincoln? What was she doing while Tad and his father were slipping unfortunate petitioners up the back stairs at the White House? Tracy leafed through her books until she came to a story about Mary Lincoln travelling to the war front in an ambulance following the President's railway coach. Hearing that a general's wife had been allowed at the front, Mary Lincoln was an inst instantaneous shrew. Let me out of this carriage at once, she had cried. I will ask the President if he saw that woman alone. It was a long time before she simmered down. Where was that other story? Tracy asked herself. She'd meant to mark it. She turned pages, half listening to her grandparents' voices. Well, her grandmother's voice. It sounded normal. She'd probably put how mean I was out of her mind, Tracy consoled herself, as she found the story about Mary Lincoln she was looking for. Another general's wife figured in this upset too. When General Ord's wife rode near the president on an army review, Mary Lincoln had fumed, What does this woman mean by riding by the side of the president and ahead of me? Does she suppose he wants her by the side of him? No one ever told me these stories in history class, Tracy reminded herself. She tried to, tried to imagine Miss Prescott suggesting that Mary Lincoln had been jealous of General's wives and repeatedly attacked her husband in the presence of officers because of Mrs Griffin and Mrs Ord. Jeepers, Tracy thought. Lincoln faced a cavalcade of hand ringers at the White House and a tongue-lashing spouse when he got out socially. Tracy shivered. The night air had turned cold. 
she got up to close her window, windows and draw the mini blinds. She realised that she liked the effect of the gleaming blades of blinds in the darkened room and she felt somewhat better. I think I'll go tell Grandma what a Harrod and Mary Lincoln was and how one of General Grant's party said that, pre said that the President bore Mrs Lincoln's jealous attacks as Christ might have done. Grandma will like that, Tracy knew. She likes President Lincoln. And I'll get a cup of hot chocolate or something soothing, Tracy admitted, pulling on a robe and stepping into her scuffs. Grandma and Grandpa were so quiet that Tracy speculated they might have gone to bed. As she pushed, pushed open the kitchen door, she found them in the fat rattan lamp circle of light, Grandpa poring over the crossword puzzle, Grandma working on her needlepoint pillow. Only Grandma looked up. Been studying? she asked, as if she were picking up on an early conversation. In a way, Tracy answered, dissembling slightly. I found a story I thought you would like. Before you tell me, her grandma grandmother interrupted, would you like a cup of tea? It's fresh. What I'd really like is hot chocolate. OK, grandmother got up, putting on her spectacles and pushing herself up from the table with her forearms. I can make it, Tracy said her voice slightly forced because she really didn't have the energy to make the effort. I'm getting tired of sitting, her grandmother said. You tell me what's on your mind. I've been reading about President Lincoln, everybody's favourite president, Grandma put in. Well, really, about Mary Lincoln. Not everybody's favourite first lady, by a long shot, Grandma rattled the revereware hanging on the pegboard over the sink as if to underline her negative assessment of Mrs Lincoln. Never did care for that woman. Stuck up and spendthrift. Tracy was surprised that she wanted to, to defend Mary Lincoln. She started to tell her grandmother how sometimes she grieved for, for Mary Lincoln. Then she remembered that President Lincoln survived the same woes without getting stuck up or spendthrift. Did you know how jealous she was, Grandma? I've got a book here that tells how she yelled awful things at the wives of Lincoln's generals. Surprisingly, it was Grandpa who answered. Had a woman at work tell me about that, he said. About Mary Lincoln yelling at general, General's wives? No, Grandpa lifted his cup deliberately and took a long drink of his favourite Irish breakfast tea before he went on. Grandma was staring, stirring cocoa into the sugar. Tracy shift, shifted restlessly in her chair. Her grandmother was a maid in Lincoln's house. Whose grandmother? Grandma had been distracted. This woman at work. She used to tell us all the time that her grandmother said that Mary Lincoln heaved crockery at Abe when she was mad at him. We never paid any attention to her, but now she's proved right. I told Tracy about that woman's grandmother. Grandma poured the cocoa mixture into the blender. Grandpa was answering, but they couldn't hear him over the churring machine. I like to serve it hot and frothy. Grandma told Tracy when she poured the cocoa into a saucepan. How was that? How was what? Grandpa had gone back to his puzzle. How did that friend of yours prove that Mary Lincoln tossed, tossed dishes at her husband? She's no friend of mine. George, put down that paper and tell us properly. Grandma pressed her lips into a rare prunes and prisms shape. What is it you want to know? The child is interested in Mary Lincoln. She's been reading about her for school. About that crockery. How did they prove it? I thought you saw it in the papers. For once, Grandma got a little testy. Saw what in the papers? Grandpa must have been seeing trouble rising because he tucked his paper under his elbow as if he meant to make a clean breast of the affair. They're sprucing up that Lincoln house in Springfield. When they dug up the backyard, they discovered tons of broken dishes. That woman at work bought, the, bought us the article. She was very excited, told us that we hadn't paid any attention to her story, Now that now her grandmother was vindicated. We didn't know she took it all so seriously, but I guess her grandmother was right. Tracy smiled at Grandpa's uncharacteristically long speech, even though she was sad to think of Abraham Lincoln ducking cups and saucers. Lincoln was such a big man. Mary Lincoln was such a little woman. It must have been ludicrous. Tracy started to say when the phone rang, breaking into the tight little circle of three worried people. She saw her grandmother hesitate, hand on phone, before she said, Hello? She's more concerned than I realise, Tracy mused. 
She looked like she might drop the phone. After all, she reminded herself, Mum is her only daughter. But it wasn't the dreaded bad news. Grandma's eyes swung from the wall she'd been staring at across the room to Tracy. She held out the phone. It's for you, Tracy, she said. A boy. It was Alan. Could I pick you up Saturday morning, he asked. I'm getting Jan and JJ. Tracy rounded the door jam into the dining room, trailing the long cord around the sink. I thought you were mad at me, she said to Alan. It's been weeks. Not really that long, Alan countered. It seems like weeks to me. Maybe more's happened to you than me. Yeah, I guess, Tracy's mind ranged briefly over the last three days. Anyway, about picking you up. Alan waited a second before going on. That okay? Seven o'clock? Can you believe it? On a Saturday morning? We'd better see something good like a pileated woodpecker. No promises, Alan said, except I'll get you there. You have to sight the woodpeckers yourself. Nice boy I told you about, Tracy heard her grandmother saying as she hung up the phone. Talking to Alan had reminded her there was a world outside this kitchen. She knew she she should go Saturday morning. Blow the stink off, as Grandpa would say. But she knew that what she wanted to do was hide in this family circle. Too late. The phone had already broken the connection. The froth on the hot chocolate was flat. The liquid was cold. The overhead light had displaced the tight little circle around the table. The good feeling had petered out. A quiver shook Tracy's spine. I hope I don't break up any comforting circles on Saturday, she thought, wondering how long Alan would continue to be patient with her. Until next time. Good night.